Ato. This time I'd like to ask her to please stand in the circle moment. Tonight's community update is as follows. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the City of Rocky Mount's Fire Department. Uh, they were deployed uh, last Thursday to help the wildfire that was that occurred out in Henderson County. Uh, so we're happy to report that our personnel returned safely to Rocky Mount earlier today. So again, thank you to our fire department and our chief and all those personnel. Uh, the Jingle Mingle Artisan Market will be held from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday at the Imperial Arts Center, and so we will feature art, jewelry, photography, pottery, artisan gifts, ornaments, and more. 
So this is a free annual event, and it's also made uh, possible through our partnership with the Imperial Center as well as the Tar River Arts Collaborative. And then finally, I would just like to remind the community that the city facilities and offices will be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 23rd and 24th, in observation of the Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes my update. Thank you. Any questions or um, comments for our city manager? Okay, here's none. I'm going to move to item number seven on our agenda, which is a resolution I'd like the council to consider. I'll read it. Resolution recognizing and congratulating Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreational Department's youth track team, the Rocky Mountain Rockets, for qualifying for the U.S. ATF National Junior Olympics Championships. Whereas USA Track and Field is one of the most visible youth athletic development programs in the country, sponsoring state, regional, and national track events for youth athletes across the United States. Whereas the team members who compete in the state, regional, and national championship meets must qualify based on their individual team performance, as well as stellar times recorded during various local meets that meet up to the qualifications. And whereas the Rock Mountain Rockets comprise the following team members Andrews, Davis, Christian, Knight, and Nakia Wilson, based on their state and regional performances, qualify for the nationals. And whereas the members of the team, uh, the members and the events for which they qualify are as follows. Kendris Davis, the 3,000, 1,500, and 500 meters. Christian, Christiana Knight, 800, 400, and 200 meters. Nakia Wilson, the 3,000, 1,500, and 500 meters. And whereas Kendris Davis was an individual 13, 14 girls, USATF, North Carolina State Champion, in the 33,000, 1,500, and 800 meters. And the individual 13 14 girls USATF regional champion at the 3,000 meters, and whereas Christiana Knight was the individual SU girls USATF North Carolina State Championship in the 800 meters, the individuals SU girls USATF regional champion in the SOO 400 200 meters, and earned USATF All American honors in the Four hundred, two hundred meters, based on her performance at the national championships. And whereas Nakia Wilson was the individual eleven and twelve girls USATF North Carolina champion in the three thousand and fifteen hundred meters, and the individual eleven to twelve girls USATF regional championship in the fifteen hundred meters. And whereas youth athletics athletes performed their manner that distinguished them individually and collectively as a team, and brought credit not only to themselves but to their families, their city, and their community. Whereas also contributed to team success was their outstanding coaches, Mark Davis and Chris Knight, who provided leadership and coached the team members, caring for them like family, and guided them through their various needs and the support of their parents. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, the mayor of the City of Rocky Mountain and the City of Rocky Mountain City Council, hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Mayor, Parks and Recreation Department, the Rocky Mountain Parks, Youth Track Team, the Rocky Mountain Rockets, and be further resolved this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of the proceedings. The conference shall be presented to each team member and coaches for who were instrumental in winning this phenomenal championship. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt this 13th day of the Second. Motion made by Councilman Swinner, seconded by Councilman Dalton. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Congratulations.
At this time, I'd like to make a presentation uh, in honor and recognition of Apostle Allison M. Dickens, founder of God's United Churches of Deliverance, Agape Fellowship Churches of Deliverance, for her love and dedication to the Rocky Mountain community. The witness here, I'll like to appear on to accept my hand calls the steel of the city of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, to be affixed this 13th day of November 2022. I'd like to ask members to please come forward so we can present. to raise a question or present a request of council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the city manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored or give everyone an opportunity to speak and speak for about three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented by the security officer prior to the opening of the meeting. And if an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person 
present for its comments. For comments in regard to an item that is subject to a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time will be granted. City Council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete a sign-in sheet, address comments to the Council as a whole, and not to individual Council members or city staff. Speak from the podium, from the podium in a civil, not argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal tax which have a potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and we ask to sit down or remove it from the meeting. We keep comments to three minutes. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite Dr. Kim to the podium. Last Saturday, I attended an event to unveil a North Carolina Highway Historical Marker at the Red Hill Missionary Baptist Church. The marker's title is Equal Rights League, and this is what it says. Newly free people, 1866, rallied at Hammonds Hill here, which is Red Hill now, for voting rights, fair wages, self-defense, became early grassroots civil rights organization. The newly free slaves were organizing to build better lives after the Civil War and during Reconstruction. This is part of the forgotten history of African American people in Ashcombe County, which, had un which were unearthed by the hard work of the Phoenix Historical Society. The marker reminds us that what happened in the past is still very relevant to us in the present. 150 years later, and we have not achieved any of the goals outlined in the marker. We have become more disenfranchised by political games and maneuvering of both parties. We do not see fair wages as attested by the current struggles of our sanitation workers and other city employees. And instead of self-defense, the killing of black people was so uncontrolled that it sparked the Black Lives Matter movement. There is no progress, and instead we are moving backwards. The powers that ruled us use our tax dollars to prop up failing mega banks while giving businesses and corporations huge tax cuts and send our hard-earned tax dollars to other countries like Ukraine and Israel to fight as proxies in imperialist wars to hold on to U.S. domination of the world. Worse still is that our government is clearly complicit in the genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza by continually blocking the United Nations majority wishes to have an immediate ceasefire and to allow humanitarian aid to get to the people of Gaza. Meanwhile, our city council sits smartly, logging fair races to sanitation workers who are majority African Americans in their time of need, supported by a, by a majority only because some African American council members have forgotten their roots and, and the mighty struggles of their ancestors for voting rights, fair wages, and self defense. Shame on you. If any of you claim to have any humanity left, work to make the lives of your workers better, give them the raises they need, and pass a resolution supporting an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you. Thank you. I want to invite Natalie Marie to the podium. Good afternoon.
us next. We, the citizens, are watching and we are praying that we will come to a reasonable agreement. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Richard Pedway to the podium.
$36,753 a year. Contrary to what WRL put out in its news report a month ago, that starting to pay us for sanitation workers in Rocky Mountain was $40,000. Uh, it's not $40,000. Um, workers deserve a fair raise, and we've asked this council to give them the fair hearing uh, it wants. Now, after Mr. Jones delivered that petition, last week after this mayor's election was over, the city made efforts to terminate Mr. Jones. We, this, you know, I'm also a historian with the Phoenix Historic Society and done much research on the 1978 Rock Mountain Sanitation Works. And now they put uh, Mr. Jones in the same position they put Alexander Edwards in in 1978. We call on uh, justice for Mr. Jones and reinstatement Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Wren. This time I'd like to invite Cooper Blackwell to the table. Good evening, everybody. Um, we stand before you once again, the NAACP, and the members of our community to express a concern about the sanitation workers. Um, it's with a heavy heart that today we have to address the council again um, about an issue that we feel like it's not just a budgetary issue, but it's an issue of equality and justice. Um, it's the issue of fairness. And in our last uh, council meeting decision to the table the matter, um, you know, left many of the community bewildered. They're really upset about it. And we can't overlook the irony that our city, which aspires to become a national beacon of hope for equity, for justice, and fairness, um, with our efforts with Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and so much that we've done downtown, um, has faltered in recognizing and understanding the importance of what our purpose is to be for the people. Um, we falter in recognizing our individual contributions um, of, and the contributions of those in the audience right now to keep our streets clean and keep our city running smoothly. Um, I commend Councilman Knight and Councilman Blackwell um, for being steadfast in their commitment to ensuring that compensation and treatment for the sanitation workers um, it's a top priority, but Mr. Gunner has, has stood for that as well. Uh, but their courage has to serve as a reminder to everyone else on the council um, that with the privilege that's bestowed upon us um, in, in each of you, that you all have made commitments to support the all city workers, not just the select few. Mr. Manager presented in, after 30 days uh, a plan to swiftly increase the, rate, the salaries of the police to 36%, shortly followed by the fire department by 27% uh, within less than 60 days. You know, it's been well over 100 days now, and you know, we still haven't got, we've been here week after week with no avail. Um, we acknowledge the work that they're doing, that everybody's doing, but the sanitation workers are demanding a, a fair raise. Um, so we've seen the pay study, we've seen the numbers, we know it's possible, we just got to figure out how to make it work. And um, 
the NAACP is going to be here every time with the community members until we see something done about it. So we urge you to make it happen tonight. Um, let's let's make a fair action. Well, my time is up, so I think I might just stand here until the bell rings. Um, you know, I think it's important, you know, also that, you know, in, as we collectively move, you know, about equity in our city and prioritizing health care, um, spending. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'd like to make comments directly to the individual council members or to the city staff. This time I'd like to ask.
And I think let's have the same rules back and forth, the same rules that apply. And the same thing is to speak when the podium is civil and non-argumentative, respectful manner, the same thing. We should have that same level of respect that you require of us. We should get, get that from you. Personal attacks, I mean, that goes without saying, let's, let's just try to keep it civil. And all of that so that each of us can open our ears to hear each other and open our hearts to maybe listen to what the other side has to say. Because especially this past election season, things have gotten really, really nasty. And I think that's not going to take us in any sort of a good direction. So let's try to just all work together and listen. And maybe we can work together. We don't think you can come from that. Thank you. Folks, good morning. So Teresa Austin Stokes, do it right Good evening. I am Teresa Alsa Stokes, and I want to thank everyone who came out who genuinely voted for me in this past election. Um, there's a lot of work still to be done, but I do want to make um, it very clear that I could not understand how Rocky Mount could have um, a municipal election that included the mayor's race, three city council seats, and it was a lack of publicity, not to mention when there was a runoff race. As the city of Rocky Mount, it wasn't about endorsing. It was about informing the citizens. So I hope in the future that whenever we do have elections or whenever the census um, is here, that we will inform the citizens because this was not an election to be taken lightly. Again, um, as I stand before you, uh, there's much work to still be done, and I will continue to advocate as always. But in the meantime, remember, as a mayor and as a council person, it's your responsibility to serve the citizens. And if you're not serving the citizens, then who are you serving? Thank you so much, and again, thank you all for your support, for my first time running. Four more years will be here sooner than later, and I plan to come back.
One note, Alexander Evans, who was terminated from this city, was terminated because he took what was trash and then I was going to give it to, to other people if he didn't have a suit. So when we are talking about sanitation issues of today, let's be sure that we give right information. Too often people say that I give untruths, falsehoods, and things that doesn't make any sense in unincorporated areas of our community. People who don't pay not one dime of property tax in our city pay not one utility bill in the city, but yet has their dads to come down here. Thank you, I'm talking about Mr. Bush Jackson. And we'll continue to keep on, brother. You don't need to see me nowhere. My dad at home. I see you. I see you. Good evening, Mayor, Managing Council. Um, on uh, Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m., the Port Lauderdale for the state of North Carolina will be at Mount Zion First Baptist Church. Jackie Shelton Green. Uh, if you have an opportunity to come out, please come out and be a part of this uh, monumental uh, occasion. Uh, we are looking forward to this, the first African American to be named for an artist and has served only 30 women and has served twice, uh, appointed by Governor Roy Cooper. So we look forward to that and we look forward to seeing you there. If there is injustice in conditions, if there is injustice when it comes to wages, uh, when it comes to treatment of people, those things must be addressed, and they must be addressed quickly. Uh, we are talking about wages here in the city for our employees. We're talking about wages for, specifically, in one case, for sanitation workers. And we're saying we want a 15% raise, and I want people to understand what a 15% raise across the board really is. The national average for the payment of sanitation workers on hourly wage is seventeen dollars. In the city of New York is seventeen sixty seven. In the city of Miami is fourteen thirty one. In the state of North Carolina, the average is thirteen dollars. And here it's seventeen sixty seven starting out, or around that. So we're already above the national average, above the state average. And in some cases, above cities like Miami and New York, I'm not saying that, that people don't need to get paid. I'm not saying that people don't need to, to get fair wage, a fair wage. But when we talk about fair, we have to understand that fair is a word that is subjective. What's fair to me may not be fair to you. And so uh, I, I, I advocate for those things when they make sense. But I want people to understand what 15% across the board really means. Do the math. Get out of the emotion and do the math. And the math does not lie. You do 15% across the board, and everybody in here will have to increase their it have to increase their taxes in order to pay for it. And I've heard people say that they've moved from different places because the taxes are too high. <laughs> I'm just saying it's just want somebody to explain it to me like on the third grade. Thank you. Thank you. Congressman, I'd like to invite you to come to the party, please.
on behalf of all of these signatures. Inevitably, we feel that this type of utilization of this property would change the character of our local area with the planned 36 two-story units. This type of construction would obviously lead to more traffic and more people in our area. The influx of people and traffic will cause issues such as increased noise safety issues, and possibility of increased crime in our area as well as the possible reduction of our property values. We had a casualty, a fatality, at the crossroads October 20th. A girl collided with an 18 wheeler. It's a lot of traffic in our area, especially since they closed Fountain Road and the other road for the CSX Intermodal. I mean, all that traffic is coming down over out of our road. Um, we as a community feel that this proposal, if approved, will definitely change the character of the local area. There are several reasons we are against this rezoning, including the traffic, which has already increased, like I said, from CSX, and also the closing of the Fountain Road in front of Wesleyan University. Also, they were talking about at the planning meeting using Avalon Road, which I understand now that they're saying that Avalon Road cannot be the main entrance or exit to this property is going to have to be all by the rural road. And they're talking about having a recreational facility. Okay, with 36 units and you're adding a recreational facility, they get estimated 100 vehicles a day. Well, that depends on that re recreational facility. It's supposed to be a senior village, but if it's a senior village, if they are selling these properties, when that property is deeded and that senior citizen passes away, it can no longer be a senior village, depending upon who their heirs are. You can't control who people leave their properties to. Lastly, if approved, we as a community will list what little bit of peace and quiet that we have left since being annexed into the city limits. Our whole community loves watching the geese fly over thank in the evening. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Thank you. Uh, what I'll ask you to do is give a petition to Mr. Davis, and he'll, he'll circulate that to city manager and just ask for the rest of the council, as, as well as your comments would be great too. But while we're doing that, I'd like to invite Antoinette Cutter to come up to the podium.
this time I'm looking for a motion to adopt the ordinances as uh, written and, and resolutions to approve the agreement authorized the mayor and city clerk finance director to execute the same on behalf of the city to award or re as recommended and authorize the purchase of the vision vision purchase orders in accordance with the council's award. Is there a motion? So moved. This time brings us to item number 10, which is a public hearing. This explanation of the feasibility study relative to annexation number 333. The culprit for the partnership of Beverly Hill Road, Ward 6, if approved. If you have a number of staff, come please uh, walk us through the study. along with a feasibility study completed by the Department of Development Services. The property, which is along Bethlehem Road, is shown on the screen as in its contiguous with the city limits at its southeast property line. You can see it there, contiguous with the city limits against the blue area. The parcel consists of approximately 45 acres and is currently undeveloped. Upon annexation, the applicant is requesting the property be zoned to R6, which is a medium density single family residential district. And if the parcel is successfully annexed, um, you'll move forward with a subsequent public hearing after this one uh, to consider that zoning request. The feasibility study outlines that all city services can be provided without significant impact and no capital improvements are required to serve the annexation. Um, the current taxable value of the property is $36,707 and the city's net annual surplus would be $282. Upon approval of annexation, the property would be assigned to Ward 6. The annexation meets the North Carolina statute requirements for contiguous annexation and would not place a burden on the provision of municipal services. Therefore, staff recommends approval of this annexation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? request is associated with the annexation request um, that was just approved. 
The planning board has forwarded this rezoning request to council with a favorable recommendation. The property, again, is located on Bethlehem Road, consists of 45 acres. Um, the surrounding zoning consists of A1, which is an agricultural distri district with single-family residential zoning districts within the vicinity. The applicant is requesting to zone the property R6, which again is a medium density single family residential district. The property is currently undeveloped. At the planning board meeting um, that was held, two neighboring property owners spoke, um, citing concerns about flooding on the property. The planning board has forwarded a favorable recommendation to the city council based on its consistency with the Together Tomorrow comprehensive plan and that it anticipates no negative impact on the surrounding area. The planning board did consider traffic and surrounding land uses in its decision to send a favorable recommendation. And I'm happy to answer any questions. And as a follow-up, there were community meetings associated with the rezoning request, um, including that the planning board held a hearing. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Paul Thompson? Okay, now at this time, I'll open up the podium for anybody here from the Brook Hall who wishes to speak on this particular rezoning request. Is there anybody here present who wishes to speak in, uh, in regards to the matter at hand? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to adopt the ordinance. Is there a motion? Motion by Councilor Thorne. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Walker. Is there any for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, line sign. Matter carries. Item number 12 is consideration of the recommendation from the planning board meeting, which was held on September 12th of 2023, and acknowledge receipt of the planning board minutes. Overview of the requests and recommendations by the director of public services will be designed. So at this time, um, you can please come forward and give us a, an update on this. So public hearing relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval of ground compliance with the comprehensive plan by the uh, planning board. It's a request by Racetrack Incorporated to rezone plus or minus 7.01 acre site having PIN number 356214343819 located on West End Boulevard, southeast in conjunction with Thomas Fetch Parkway from I-2, which is heavy industrial district, and 5 which is the commercial services district. Thank you. The planning board has forwarded this rezoning request to council with a favorable recommendation. Again, the property is located at North West Lane Boulevard, Boulevard, where it intersects the Thomas A. Betts Parkway. It's outlined in yellow on the screen. The property is approximately seven acres in size and is currently undeveloped. Surrounding zoning includes I-2, which is industrial to the north, I-2 and agricultural to the east, and B-5, which is a business service district to the south. And North Carolina White Sand is to the northeast across the intersection. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property from I-2 industrial to B-5, the business service district. B-5 is intended to support a wide variety of commercial services and uses. At a planning board meeting in September, the property owner to the north spoke, citing concerns with traffic safety and vehicular access to his property. But the planning board has forwarded a favorable recommendation to the city council based on the request's consistency with the Together Tomorrow comprehensive plan and that it anticipates no negative impact on the surrounding area. The planning board considers surrounding land uses and zoning as well as traffic on the adjacent road in its consideration. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for council?
the site plan is still early on in the process, and if approved, we look forward to working um, through any items that may come up with um, DOT and any other uh, agency that will be reviewing it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public here to speak on the side? I represent Marion Barn and Country uh, Deer Trailer Associates. Uh, the biggest concern that Mr. Barnes has has already been alluded to, and that is the safety concern. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with Mr. Barnes' work, Mr. Barnes uh, deals with tanker trucks. Uh, they come in and out of his facility. We had one day uh, last week where he had 32 <coughs> tankers come out uh, in and out of his facility. Uh, and as you know, some of those tankers uh, carry uh, propane, some of them carry uh, liquid uh, gasoline, and so they're, they're very dangerous instrumentalities that are dealt with. And the development of this piece of property next door, in our judgment, is going to be a very, very difficult thing for this property. Uh, as you can see, uh, without the racetrack being next door, as you can see from looking at the things that have been passed out to you, there are a series of accidents that have occurred uh, right there at the intersection of Mr. Barnes' property. And we can only anticipate that if you've got more traffic coming out from the racetrack location that will be immediately next door, uh, you can only anticipate that that is going to get worse uh, rather than better. Uh, and there's really, in my judgment, uh, these uses of this particular property are just not consistent with one another. It seems to me also that we are getting the cart before the horse a little bit here uh, because we do not have any type of information that has come down from the North Carolina Department of Transportation. So we do not know what the uh, Department of Transportation is going to do with respect uh, to allowing this uh, access uh, to the property. And so as a result of that, uh, you may rezone the piece of property, and we're going to be sitting here with no judgment from North Carolina Department of Transportation, and it's not going to be able to be used for racetrack because they're not going to be able to get a necessary driveway permit. So it seems to me that at a minimum, we ought to wait until the North Carolina Department of Transportation has had an opportunity to uh, let you know how they feel about this project. It's a very difficult intersection. I don't know whether you folks have recalled the history or not, but when this uh, Thomas Bed Parkway was placed uh, in operation, uh, it, initially there was not going to be a direct access from Thomas Bed Parkway into uh, Mr. Barnes' property. After negotiations with the North Carolina Department of Transportation, it was decided.
decided that the safest thing to do would be able to allow direct access to Thomas Fifth Parkway uh, into Mr. Barn property. Uh, and so that really, I think, uh, was a good thing to have happen. But when you're talking about putting people coming into a, a, a gas station, and we're not talking about simply automobiles, uh, we're also talking about an area that I've seen a, a, a draft of what they anticipate. Mr. King, I need to tighten up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just running out. I understand. Thank you. Uh, the bottom line is we, we're concerned about safety. We're also concerned about the fact that all kinds of public transportation is not active. We hope that you will uh, deny this rezoning report. Thank you. Is there any other member of the public here wishing to speak on this particular rezoning matter? It's been brought up about North Carolina DOT. In, in the rezoning, typically that, that, that doesn't occur. It's, it's, I don't think it totally goes to, to approve the plan. Is that accurate? Second to. I second the motion. 
Ms. Walker, second that day. Y'all recognize the council of the So, I guess maybe in that 30 days, would there be something, some information from DOT on this? <laughs> Motion to um, table the matter for 30 days and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. 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 Motion passes, sir. So we move on. Item 13, thank you for that, Council Blackwell. Um, are there any appointments to call for court tonight? Okay, I have, uh, I have two that I'm aware of. One is James Darren, as a request to remove the main board from the board four seat. The other is Tucker, appointments to the board seven seat for animal control and prosecution. I'm not talking to you. 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 I talk wherever I want to talk to you. I talk wherever I want to talk to you. I talk wherever I want to talk to you. Well, you silly, boy. I'm old enough to be your daddy. I'm old enough to be your daddy, boy. He better leave me alone. He need to leave me alone. He need to leave me alone. He need to leave me alone. I got a daddy, too. He need to leave me alone. He need to leave me alone. He need to leave me alone. 
Okay. He didn't leave me alone. Tell him don't talk about me. Tell him don't talk about me. Tell him don't talk about me. All right, see you later. All right. Everything good? <laughs> Everything good? Oh, yeah, all right. Okay, I'm going to keep my head. All right, okay, yeah. 